Malachi in chapter 1, verse, just one verse, verse 6, the Lord said, A son honoreth his father, <clears throat> and a servant his master. Those are two titles we just read. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you? O priests that despise my name, and you say, wherein have we despised thy name? I don't know what you're talking about, Lord. And by the way, call me Father. Look, now, lest I let uh, some other groups off the hook, look in... Um, <laughs> To, uh, to come over and over and over again and bring their sins, their thieves, thefts, and murders, and all of those things, and it delivers them so that they can go out and do it again and again and again and again. See, we are delivered to do all these abominations. That's how the system works. It frees us up to continue to sin. We come back, we get delivered, we go out and do it all over. Now, Psalm 16, if you would, back over into the book of Psalms. Let's take a look at this drink offering. Psalm, excuse me, chapter 16. This is the uh, the psalm that that ends with the uh, with the prophecy of the resurrection in verse nine. It's a good day to look at that. Psalm 16, verse nine. Therefore, my heart is glad and my uh, glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. So that's uh, foreshadowing and, and prophesying the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> We're told that in, in more than one place in the New Testament. But back up, verse 3. Psalm 16, verse 3. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight, the uh, goodness of the Lord extends to them. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. So those drink offerings that they're offering to the Queen of Heaven are drink offerings of blood. And we won't, uh, you know, we won't go too far into that. In fact, I don't think we'll step any further into that at all, except for to say that I grew up in a system, and many of you may have, and many of you know people who partake on a regular basis of these drink offerings of blood. This is not some ancient uh, barbaric thing that, uh, that, that fell out of favor when, when man got civilized. This religion exists, and it's thriving as we stand here this morning. Come with me to 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10. They have drink offerings again. Israel had drink offerings. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter ten. As you come into the uh, into the New Testament, there's a new uh, remembrance instituted, and of course, this religion is more than happy to to be in line to accommodate itself. First Corinthians chapter ten, verse twenty. But I say, Paul writes, that the things which the 
which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. We cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partaker of the Lord's table and the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? So this thing's got a, uh, it's got a cup and it's got a table. And it's the cup of devils and the table of devils. And they've got the drink offering in the cup and they've got those cakes on the, on the table. And um, it's all very, uh, it just molds and shifts and changes and morphs itself just so easily. 